Yo, what is going on guys? It's Jack and welcome back to another video. So, last night I was playing this game, Black Ops 4, which some of you are wondering why uh, I still stomach this game. And uh, at its core, whenever the bullshit is not happening in this game, when it's playing the way it's supposed to play and with not too much randomness going on and when the gun on gun is feeling good and all that kind of stuff and when the team balancing isn't overkill and everything like that at its core like I mentioned in previous videos at its core the gunplay is rather addictive at least to me and I have no problem with the 150 health which I'm sure a lot of people do uh, but I don't have a problem with it so uh, but to each their own so at its core I still enjoy playing this game maybe not every day but but I enjoy it so on to today's subject uh, <laughs> on Twitter last night while I was playing this game out of nowhere in between lobbies I random thoughts just popped in my head and all of a sudden I thought of this game that came out seven years ago it was around the same time as the, as the Black Ops 2 era or whatnot or right before Black Ops 2 there was a game that was released on the Xbox Live Marketplace and probably on PSN as well I'm pretty sure it was for both consoles and uh, it was called, called Gotham City Imposters and it was a first-person shooter set in the Batman universe and you were playing as either a Batman wannabe or a Joker wannabe uh, so you could and you could customize your uniforms and have it you know it was basically you can unlock them by grinding the game there were you can set up your class I think there were score streaks as well there were these special jack-in-the-box or Joker boxes around the map in order to regen your health uh, there were abilities that you see in first-person shooters today like the grapple hook or whatnot to kind of imitate Batman's grapple hook um, if you were lighter, if you chose to be lighter in weight, you would have a much weaker melee, so it would take you like more hits to kill somebody with a melee. Or if you were heavier, you can um, you can have a much more powerful melee, but you were slower in return. Uh, lightweight was basically like you could use rollerblades or whatnot. It was crazy, and you can customize the goofy looking capes, the goofy goofy looking masks. It was absolutely insane, and there was a lot of replay value in that game, and people loved the hell out of it. So last night, I tweeted out. Who misses Gotham City? Who or who remembers Gotham City Imposters? And my goodness, I don't have much of a following on Twitter. Like on Twitter, it'll show you guys that I have like around 90 followers, but at least half of those, give or take, are bots. They're not real. I don't even know how to get rid of those, to be honest. But um, but the thing is, I don't have much of a following on Twitter. Uh, but I have enough of a following to where the people that I do tweet at and tweet at me. There's constant communication on a daily basis, which wasn't always a thing. Kind of like the comment section here on the channel. So that's that's really humbling. But my goodness, the amount of responses and retweets that I got was absolutely fascinating. And it's what led me to this commentary today. And we live in an age now to where, um, like I said, gaming itself has gone through a transition and it's becoming bigger by the day. It's a, it's a multi-billion dollar business. Uh, and then some so uh, there are a multitude of reasons of why gaming is not frowned upon anymore yes one of those reasons is money but uh, with time you start to realize that hey there are more gamers out there than we thought and from all walks of life and the thing is that a lot of people miss this game and we're in an age now to where with social media YouTube word of mouth and all these kind of things streaming Twitter you name it um, it can make things happen in the gaming universe and remasters especially for us that are a little bit older like me and I'm, I'm 34 so if you were to remaster a game today that I grew up with playing even though I won't play it that much because usually I just like to play multiplayer shooters like COD uh, mostly COD but if another game plays like COD I will, I will absolutely play it and love the hell out of it because that's that's just my cup of tea right now that's just what I prefer to play right now I might go back to where I'll play more single-player games in the future but as of right now, multiplayer is where it's at, and it, and it caused me to le uh, to basically make a YouTube video almost four years ago. About two months away, we're going to be at four years on the channel. Whew! My goodness. And um, anyway, this game played so similarly, but yet so different to COD, and it was absolutely amazing. It was, it was fun grinding, unlocking things, so many unique weapons, grapple hooks, a goofy personality. It was absolutely nuts. And I didn't really want to look up footage again before making this commentary because I just wanted to go, I just wanted to go from thought because I wanted it to be as natural and organic as possible. Uh, because I'm sure there are most of us that haven't really thought of that game all that much because it's been so long since we at least played it. For those of us that know about it, but for those of you guys that don't and have never heard of this game or did hear of this game but didn't really 
play it or anything like that. And it was 15 bucks on Xbox Live back then, so not everybody bought it. And the thing is right now, we live in an, in an age to where, uh, look at Battle Royale and the success that Battle Royale is having, right? And the free to, gain, free to play. Free to play is becoming big now. And uh, it's also becoming profitable because of the microtransactions. And granted, if it's done right, people will spend a few bucks here and there, and they'll and they'll and they'll purchase like a unique skin or something like that, uh, or whatever else that it is. But the game itself, at its base, would be free to play. And the thing is, man, with with everything that I just mentioned about how remasters are popular, and they are a thing, and this game is definitely a thing because of the amount of responses that I got on Twitter. Somebody who's so small on Twitter. And <clears throat> and the amount of retweets I got and responses from people saying that they miss it very much. One gentleman told me that he was actually sad because it, I, it made it, it, that my tweet made uh, made him remember of how much he misses it and it's not around anymore. They took it off of Xbox Live out of nowhere, which sucks. Um, I don't know if people are still playing it today exactly. I'm not sure. Um, but in terms of <clears throat> in terms of it being available in the marketplace, it's no longer there. I once had it, but then for some stupid reason... No, 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 I didn't uninstall it. What happened was my Xbox 360, I think, uh, ended up getting the Red Rings of Death, and I think I just never really uh, inst installed it again. I think that's what happened. And before I could, on the new console, I just it was not available to download or whatnot. So, um, something of that nature. It was either that or, or, or I uninstalled it temporarily or just made the stupid decision to uninstall it. It was one of those three things. So, but... Uh, I can say that with the Twitter responses or whatnot and word of mouth, I mean, in theory at least, we could we could definitely make this we can make this happen. We can bring back Gotham City Imposters, and if it was free to play, and if they updated the graphics, <clears throat> and even the gameplay to a certain extent, as well as more game modes and stuff like that, and just keep giving us reasons to play and play and play and grind and grind and grind and make it free to play, add some really unique skins that I'm sure a lot of people love the hell out of. One of the things that I was grinding for a lot in that game were the skins. I actually wanted I actually wanted to be able to have nothing but underwear on, the shoes, you know, the cape, a hat, or some weird headgear, and, uh, and just bare leg, bare, bare chested, and just running around and shooting people on the map. That's what I was grinding for, but it, you'd have to grind a lot in order to unlock that to be shirtless and pantless in that game. But I just wanted to look funny and look weird. So um, I think it would be a really big hit if they were to do that. And the thing is, I just wanted to talk about it because I was just so amazed and astounded and surprised, genuinely surprised, of just the amount of responses that I got on Twitter and how many people actually missed that game. Um, and the gameplay for what it was was really solid. Um, obviously, it wasn't as smooth as today's games, but that could easily be... Um, that could easily be fixed nowadays. And on top of that, uh, time and time again, it's shown that a game doesn't need to be smooth in order to be successful. It doesn't have to be the smoothest in the world. It doesn't have to have the best graphics in the world either. It just has to be done the right way. And if, in theory, if they do this with a game like Gotham City Imposters, I think it could be a hit. And it doesn't have to be just a Battle Royale game for it to be a hit. The thing that I like about Battle Royale success is that if other game genres imitate this kind of formula the right way kind of like how Fortnite is doing it or uh, Apex Legends is doing then it's going to really open up the world it's going to really open up the the, the 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 potential for success for so many different genres it's going to allow more people to play a game uh, when when money's tight and all this kind of things and at the same time they can relive their uh, the nostalgia and yeah, but those were that's where my thoughts went. I want to talk about it a little bit. And for those of you guys that have never seen Gotham City Imposters, look it up on YouTube and you will not dis be disappointed. And uh, you might even get sad because you'd want this game to be around today and you would want to play it. <laughs> and it, it, it was fun. I will tell you that for sure. And uh, if you don't believe me, just tweet it out and you'd be surprised of the amount of responses that you get. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for this one. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about the game. Did you play it? And uh, what do you think about everything else that I mentioned in this video? Let me know down in the comment section if you want to. And uh, if you want to, follow me on Twitter as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, let me know. And if you didn't, let me know what I could do to make my videos better. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.